This is just a quick video to help you get started with Scrivener. So whether you're brand new to it or you've had it for a while and you're still finding it a little bit confusing, hopefully there'll be something in it for you. So when you first open Scrivener, this is what you'll see. If you're new to Scrivener, you should also check out their video tutorials and their blog for some more tips and to discover more great features. Scrivener has templates for novels, short stories, essays, research proposals, radio plays, screenplays, poetry, and even recipe collections. Each template does have slightly different options, so be sure to pick the one that most closely matches your needs. Once you've chosen your file, Scrivener will prompt you to name it and choose where you want to save it. Be sure to save it somewhere you'll remember, as this view only shows your most recent files. If you're planning on using the mobile version too, you must sync your Scrivener files to Dropbox or it won't work. On the left is where you'll find the layout of your book. Each document is a different scene and each folder is a chapter or subchapter. If you decide you no longer need a scene or you hate it so much that you never want to see it again, you can drag and drop it into the trash. Once it's in there, you can delete it permanently by going to edit, delete, but I wouldn't advise this. You never know when an old piece of writing will come in handy. If we keep going down to the left, we also have our character sketches. This is where you can fill in different details about your characters that you may need to know when writing. When you've got a lot of characters, it's really useful to be able to refer back to them in an easy to find location rather than searching through all your notebooks or trying to find them in a dozen different Word documents. There's also a scene setting template that you can fill in to make your settings really come alive. Front Matter is where you can find all the title pages, copyright pages, and anything else that needs to go at the front of your novel. You can edit these templates or put in your own files instead, and if you decide to compile using Scrivener, this is where you'll also put your front cover. Notes and research help you to compile everything else that you need for your work in progress. Imagery used for websites and even your plot can be included in here. There's also an example under research of how to lay out your book. There are several ways you can view Scrivener when you're writing. This view, called Scrivenings, allows you to view as much or as little of your manuscript as you need. When you're feeling bogged down by your novel, being able to compartmentalise really helps keep you focused. With Scrivenings, you can focus on a single scene, chapter, a part, or the whole manuscript. If we go to the corkboard view, this is where you can plan what you want to write about in each scene. This is useful if you use something like the save the cat method, and if you're not sure what that is, I would highly recommend checking out Blake Snyder's book, even if you're not a screenwriter. Every folder and scene has its own board, allowing you to plan your story in as much or as little detail as you need. The outliner, meanwhile, is one of the ways in which you can track your writing progress. Here you can set goals for individual chapters or scenes, colour code it, mark whether it's drafted, edited or completed, what section type it is and more. What you see in the outliner is completely customisable and you can also include your own custom metadata.